How we doing, my Christmas puddings? You join me this fine and festive eve for a non-violent knockoff Crimbo Crab Fest. Yes, indeed, we'll be keeping it civil this evening because since I moved to this bloody place, I haven't got a backyard anymore. Or as I used to call it, a violence-atorium. But words hurt, baby, so let's get to beating. So every December, the supermarket shelves positively bloat with bargain basement trash for well-meaning moms to disappoint the kids with. And if it's cheapo toys you're after, it seems this season, B&M is the place to be. An M. Because alongside the assault of Avengers cast-offs, frozen garbage, and minion tat, you might just catch a glimpse into the seedy underbelly of knockoff Transformers. That's actually what B&M stands for. Bootlegs and minions. So deep breath, try to relax, because I'm going in. Let's get this train wrecker rolling with this awkwardly named six-pack transforming mech droids. Yes, indeed, this sextuple sleaze box is available at B&M's Nationwide right now for only $19.99. Featuring six micro-budget imposter bots and some deeply dull five minute packaging design. No goofy strap lines, nothing fun, just standard photos, fabricated discounts and free fonts. Oh, coalition! Nice product shots though, the figures actually look pretty decent. But I bet they're not! So check out this gnarly Optimus Prime in kinda bumblebee colours. Like it almost looks cool, I'm getting a kind of industrial vibe from the scrap metal grey and the high-vis trousers. Optimus Grime, anybody? Now I'm pretty sure this is an overblown rip off of the super simple Legends figure from Revenge of the Fallen, and it's actually a lot better than I anticipated. Like, I really dig the sweet switch-out hand weapons. That might actually be an original feature, but I'm sure it's just Rob from some other variant. I don't know, there's like a dozen. And check this, they've even given it a spring-loaded rocket launcher. God, knockoff launchers, that can't be safe. But I guess it must be with this Euro safety standard right in his face. So relax, officer. Anyway, you may be wondering why his legs are fused together like that. And they actually weren't to begin with, but I transformed it once and now they're just locked in. So that's it, we're just done with legs now. It's just pogo forever. But I guess it could have gone a lot worse. I mean, it's sort of pleasing with these banging metal smokestacks and this sweet chupa chup lucha libre face. <laughs> the little grimy transforms passably well and the truck mode's actually pretty badass. I mean at its core it is just a blown up and slightly anemic version of something that was already alright, but at the very least it looks pretty sweet with the black and gold flames and the silly macho tampos. Was that Spock wave? Now let's get all up inside Lionhide. I want to say this is an upscaled Legends figure or like a fast action battler. You know, one of the shit ones. Now, I'm all but certain this is 2007 Legends Ironhide blown up into a six-incher. And I really can't decide if it works. Check out the awkward kind of thrusting pose. Like, I'm pretty sure the original one had slightly more movement in this. But this guy's just all Duff Man all the time. Plus, it really bothers me that I can't tell if those eyes are painted in or if they're just empty face holes. Good band name. I'm an Transformation basically works, I suppose, and the vehicle mode's actually a real treat. It's all overblown and gold-plated. It's like half Ironhide, half Casino. Let's not jerk it off too much, though. B&M didn't create this. They just made it bigger and gave it a bazooka. And you could do the same thing with a potato. Doesn't work. Straight up doesn't work. So, F+. Plus. Let's now get into these two clowns, who I've decided are David Crosshairs and Michael Barricade, whom regular viewers may recognise from Beat Down 4, yeah? Yes indeed, these are two more flavours of that one Bumblebee and Beale fella. Or was it Ian Bumblebee? Did we ever decide? I must admit, I do find this thing kind of intriguing, with its sort of dwarven stylings and space marine ass weapons. Not least because it keeps showing up everywhere and I've no idea where it came from. So anyway, here's the green one who I suppose is supposed to look like crosshairs. Back once again with the unnerving empty head. I really don't like that face. It's smug aura mocks me. And the bad guy barricade version's admittedly super cute. Like the cop car deco's fun and the head's very classically transformery. It's kind of a shame then that they're both so inescapably pitiful. Just like old Bumblebee and they can't stand up and the joints are all weak and wibbly. And the transformation's a friggin' non-event. Like it almost works but it seems to require more force and more fiddling than the Z grade plastic allows for. Like I really want to get in there and mash it around but it's also flimsy and blade like that I just super don't feel good about it. So sadly the car modes are out but check out Lil Barry's terrible tampos. 911 rub dongs. God is that what they do? More emergency themed fun now with this ambulance idiot who we'll call rat shit. So rather than being a blowed up tiny guy this hapless husk is just a straight up fast action butler with all the trimmings and none of the class. That's so ratchet. So I guess the robot mode's kind of fun. I mean, it's rocking the legendary axe that shoots caveman clubs and everything kind of works. Ah. <laughs> So I guess it must scrape past some kind of minimum requirement. Wait, is that Dropshot's head? Okay, now you're pandering. Try 
transformation kind of almost works. Like, I don't know if it fits together perfectly, but you know what? I'm kind of okay with it. It's by far the best thing in the box. It's just cute as. Like, I know it's a NAF version of it, but it doesn't offend me. Aside from it being Hasbro's handiwork with B&M's name on it, being an ambulance. Similar kind of thing with Smegatron here. It was a straight up downgraded doppelganger of the 2009 Cannon Blast Megatron in a kind of gross earwaxy color. Now, the earlier movie Megatron toys were always a kind of unknown quantity because they turned from an ugly mm. lumper robot into an ugly mm. lumper nothing. So I guess this just takes that to its logical conclusion. What is going on with that head? It's like a horrifying nightmare clown with a blood soaked grin and then it comes off. Happy Christmas, little Billy. Here's a decade of night terrors. Anyway, aside from being trauma central, it's also just a bad toy. Like the legs are wibbly as a wet noodle. The arms don't clip together in the nonsensical tank mode. <clears throat> oh, look what happened. And look at this. For some reason, he's got a little battery compartment there. But then you open up and there's no points. What is this? So it's an ugly, ill-functioning innocence destroyer loaded with redundant gimmicks and it's the colour of extremely unhealthy oh. diarrhea. Love it! So that's the six pack and I guess you could charitably call it a mixed bag? I mean it's 20 quid for two oversized legends, two soft focus fast action battlers and two mystery turds. So out of six I guess three of them are, I don't want to say good, but like acceptable? Oh and you also get some character cards, like literal cards. They're pieces of card. Hang on, space robot? I thought these were transforming mech droids. What a hoax! So if you think all that's worth 20 quid, I mean, I'm not here to judge. I'm just telling you the facts, you scumbag. All right, on to the next bit of peasant plastic. Check out this horrendously humongous convertible car bot. Now, I actually picked up this thing at the entertainer, but you can currently grab a two pack at Boring and Miserable for 25 pounds. I mean, don't. But you can. <sighs> so check it out. This is the yellow Ford GT variant, and it's probably the worst thing I've ever seen. I'm not even really exaggerating. It's just sparse car parts draped over a hollow grey skeleton. Barely any engineering to speak of. It's just ghastly. But like, it's kind of harmlessly bad. Like, it's almost so bad that it goes all the way around past infinity and comes back to being kind of cool. I mean, bless him, he's just a big, doofy, gangly dork with these ridiculous door wings. And come on, who among us isn't just sparse body parts draped over a skeleton? Plus he's got way too many weapons, some of which actually have functioning lights and sounds. God knows that was a shock. <laughs> Do you want me to come back later or...? So just saying, if you're tempted to pick one up for the kids, just know it's terrible and annoying. Transformation's so obvious and barely operable, and the plastic's just so thin and horrible. I didn't even do that, it just did it itself. It's so cheap! <laughs> it's just coming to bits! I don't know what to do! I'm not gonna lie, I kinda love this thing. It's kinda so tragic as to be charming, but it's not really a knockoff as such, so what's the problem? Who's he hurting? Leave him alone, you shit! And look, the head even lights up and... Crowl, get down, get back. You can't take them all, buddy. Just run! Crowl! Ah! <laughs> a joke about PTSD. Do you like that? Happy Christmas. But by far the most bewildering thing is that this rotten little wretch is sporting multiple Ford badges. And look, it even says on the back that it's officially licensed by Superway International. We meet again. <laughs> So it would in fact appear that somebody at Ford actually signed off on a merchandising deal with the world's shittest toy company. And these things are showing up worldwide, man. There was a time when I get like four messages a week from folks who'd seen them all over the planet. So this is like the flagship for Ford's merchandising empire. They've got some reach, man. And they're representing your brand. And they're terrible! Are you proud? Are you delighted to lend your badge to products of this standard? Ford? Get your shit together. This is unbecoming. So until such time as you get some self-respect, I'll leave you with the immortal words of Henry Ford. You can have any colour you like, as long as it's not Jewish. Now, how do you feel about shady two-bot combiner sets? Presenting the Fusion Warriors. So this cheap and cheerful bro-bot briefcase showed up at Pound Stretcher earlier this year. And then much later at, you guessed it, Biscuits and Melancholia, where they were repackaged as 
Robot heroes. Oh, meet me halfway. So as I understand it, these are based on a Chinese line called Robo Revolution from HyperWiz. And they're either knockoffs or just direct repackagings, because who's ever heard of Robo Revolution? So first up are the Pound Stretcher Fusion Warriors. This is Turbotron, the standard sports car simpleton. And Rock Crusher, the bulldozer bot with the world's coolest job title. Now the quality on these is pretty pathetic. Like the plastic's super light and thin and just lousy with imperfections. And the joint are horribly scrapey, like they're constantly ready to wear out. The designs are kind of fun though, like Turbotron's the most generic possible version of this kind of robot. You know, the straightforward hood chest lights down sideswipe alike. And the car mode's kind of nice because of course it is. Rock Crusher's a right little dreamboat though. I'm just a sucker for an industry bot and this kid's got potential. Check out that squishy little bulldozer mode with the ridiculous treads. And check it out, he even comes with a cosmic broadsword he can't possibly use. Good band name though. Meanwhile, their brash and manly counterparts definitely raise the stakes in the name game. Say hi to Firestorm and Sergeant Justice. Are you kidding me? Boringly though, the Sarge is just Turbotron again. I mean, there's cosmetic differences, but come on, they're the same bloody thing. Even with the same weird crucifix tattoo. Meanwhile, Firestorm totally steals the show. Like, he's clearly the best one by miles, even if he is just Universe Inferno for babies. Robots enjoyably Optimus Primey. Truck mode's an absolute love pile with the Ultra Magnusy water cannon. Like, it's almost worth a $7.99 for this guy and the bit of the box that says Sergeant Justice on it. But I guess we gotta deal with the combining charade, which is obviously gonna suck. I was right. So in both cases, you take the more interesting guy and fold him up into a pair of trousers, and then you flatten out the car man and just flop him on top of it. And normally, combining robots gets me kind of pumped, but here, just nothing. Total flatline. So this is Turbo Crusher, and it's kind of a mess. I mean, the design's pretty flawed anyway, with the one-way knee elbows elbows and all this junk in the trunk but like the added plastic badness and underfunded color scheme just make it extra disappointing as for the other guy i guess he feels a bit better but like firestorm's little baby legs just ain't built for two plus the instructions want me to wear the helmet okay jeez I mean, it's not gonna fit, just like these weapons don't fit anywhere. So while he may have one of the best names I've ever seen on anything, Pionado, turns out it's actually just a bit of a suck quake and a total waste avalanche of my eight pound tsunami. But honestly though, even though the combining elements are a bit of a washout, these Robo Revolution lads are super goddamn rare. So do we even have the option to get a version of them down your local B&M or Pound Stretcher? I mean, you could do worse. Is that a recommendation? I don't know. Here's what I want to know though. Have you noticed all these things have got handles? Why though? When are you ever going to use that? Like, are you going to take it out and about with you? I guess it does let you carry it to the checkout with one hand free to smash a f like button. Finally tonight, we've been getting reports here at ThuHQ of something mighty unusual knocking about the aisles of blatant and mercenary. Something dark and awesome and practically unheard of, concealed in a huge dated ass box like something out of Robot Wars from Derbyshire. Morphotron. <laughs> now this horrifying heartthrob is something of a new phenomenon as far as I know. This is the first time I've ever seen a bootleg of an unlicensed third party figure on general sale at a major UK retailer. Yes indeed, a second hand use of a third party figure. There's like six parties. So yeah, six in one Morphotron here, or six not, is a bargain basement downgrade of Mastermind Creation's Terminus Hexatron Shadow Emissary. Which to my mind also makes it the first known instance of the knockoff name actually being less embarrassing. And you can grab one today from Bellins and Maniacs for 10 quid, which is even more of a bonus because it's normally 12 99 Yeah, but when though? Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Because you see, I don't like to legitimize knockoffs by giving them a proper in-depth review, but this is exciting, man! Because much as Terminus Hexatron's a massive edgelord, he is actually quite good. So hold me back and let's just get slightly into this. Like, just the tip. So I guess it does look the part, like it totally nails the non-more black colour scheme with some subtle gold leafing, horrible zombie green rifles and tiny scowling red eyes. Gold? Frankenstein? And 
Grr. Quality is actually far from terrible. Like, I think they scrapped an ankle tilt. Only one of his elbows is ratcheted. Head's a big empty pistachio shell. But overall, it's a fairly semi-bang-up con job. Like, unlike all those other jabronis, it's actually quite good fun to transform. Like, I'm not worried it's gonna snap at any point. And it can pretty much nail all the modes. Like, nothing much has been sacrificed, so everything works. So honestly, if we're talking strictly value for money, then, you know, for a tenner, Johnny Six-Year-Old's gonna get a real kick out of this. And, I mean, I'm gonna keep it. I mean, it's probably worth 10 quid just for these two nasty, badass, cleaver, hatchet, buster sword knuckle dusters. Dr. Wu? More like Dr. Who? No, not like that! But like, on the grown-up side of the argument, I really don't know how I feel about this. Because there's part of me that wants to say, aren't third-party toys already kind of knockoffs? I mean, sure, the toys themselves are original, but it's still Hasbro's IP. And, I mean, I don't want to get too deep into this topic. <laughs> Let's keep it light, yeah, it's Christmas. But what it comes down to is that two wrongs can't make me give a shit. I'm keeping it. So get on down to Benton Mouldering and pick up some tat and have a grand old time. Hey, they might even still have those morph bots from last year. And you're never more than 30 feet from a robot with lights. They are literally vermin. But here's the weird thing, I've seen a lot of this kind of tat. And it's pretty standard with this kind of obviously stolen releases for retailers to at least maintain the illusion of having bought them in from somewhere. So normally they slap on some kind of phony baloney manufacturer name like Fantastic or Happy Well or Superway International. Or you actually do it, like you get in bed with somebody obtusely Eastern, like Meng Badi or Kubian Bao or... Wei Jang Wang Fang Shong Wing Fu Yip Wong Po Ku. But like, this just says manufactured for B&M. So that's it. No distance, no layers, no denial, no shame. Just boorishness and malevolence. Like, yeah, we nicked it. Who cares? I'll tell you who cares. Nobody. Because generally nobody gives a crap. Not B&M, not Johnny Six-Year-Old, not his mum. And here's me, Mr. Wise-Ass Smarty Pants, trying to set straight this Watergate. And even I just admitted I like a few of them. Because even though I bought these ironically to take the piss, still bought them. They still got my money, ain't they? So I suppose after everything we've been through today, we've learned absolutely nothing. Thanks for watching. So yes, major cheers to good old Carl Megas for picking me up the Fireado lads, and to your sweet face for sticking with me through the whole thing. So from me and everyone else here at Theo HQ, it's just me, won't you have a craptastic Christmas? And if you don't do Christmas, then just have a nice Sunday. Keep it counterfeit!